Hello freaks, welcome back to Freak Week Day 4. I hope you guys have been enjoying Freak Week so far. If you missed it, we have been doing a video every day leading up to Halloween. So today I'm gonna be telling you about a very creepy house that is not really haunted, but something creepy keeps happening to this house. And I am very interested to get your thoughts and opinions on this, so I'm excited to jump into it. But before we start, I'd like to thank our sponsor for this video, AMC's Shutter. So this is the perfect time of year to try out Shutter because Shutter is a streaming service, but for scary content only. I'm sure a bunch of you freaks would be all over this. Shudder has a truly incredible selection of horror and thrillers. What's really cool about it is they have a huge variety in the dates that these movies came out. Like they have a lot of classics, they have a lot of newer stuff, um, some original content as well, which is really cool. And there's also a bunch of member only perks such as exclusive releases and VIP movie screenings. And since we are days away from Halloween, it's an awesome time to go ahead and start a free trial on Shudder. With the trial, you get access to Shudder for 30 days, which is awesome. And then after that, you can stream great horrors, thrillers, and suspense content for $4.99 a month or $49.99 a year. Shudder has an incredibly unique selection of exclusive and original films and series, horror classics, and blockbuster hits. There's truly something for everyone, and when you have a membership, you have unlimited access to stream all of this content ad-free on all of your favorite devices. You can watch this pretty much anywhere. In fact, I was just watching it right here on my phone from the app while I was doing my makeup. I was just watching a really creepy movie on Jeffrey Dahmer. He was one savage mother, let me tell you. And it's going really into his life and the deep dark secrets of Jeffrey Dahmer, why he did what he did. So to activate your 30 day free shutter trial, there is a link in the description box or you can just use the code Kendall Ray. Again, that link is down there and the code is Kendall Ray. But without any further ado, let's go ahead and get talking about The Watcher and this creepy story behind this house. So this is the Broadus family, husband and wife, Derek and Maria and their three children. Back in June of 2014, this couple actually purchased a beautiful home in Westfield, New Jersey. Westfield is actually a suburb in New Jersey that is known to be one of the safest areas in the state. So they figured it was a great buy. This house had a lot of character to it. It was very classy sick looking. It was very upscale. It had six bedrooms, so definitely big. And they bought the house for $1.3 million. So you think all is well in this situation, right? This family just bought their dream home for $1.3 million. They're doing pretty good. They're about to move in, but not so fast. Right after they officially closed the house on June 2nd, before they had even moved in, the family started receiving letters in their mailbox at the new house. They were from an unexpected identified person and this person somehow knew who they were and that they bought this house and that it had been sold. Now we'll come back to this in a second, but let's talk about the previous owners of this house. So on November 29th of 1990, the past owners purchased the house. So then fast forward quite a while to May 24th, 2014. So yeah, a long time. And the people who are living in the house at this point are the people that lived there before the Brodus family and they actually received the letters as well. And when they got these letters, they were unidentified as well. And they said that they were from the last person in the family who is designated to watch the house in Westfield. So basically it was someone who had owned the house a long ass time ago and in their family. And then somehow along the line lost ownership of it. And from that point on, they were just watching it. And they actually got this letter pretty close to the time that they sold the house to the Brodus family. And they did not disclose to them that they were getting these letters that were threatening in the mail. The Brodus family saw the house, looked at it with their kids, felt like it was a perfect fit, fell in love with it, and they bought it. And they had no idea that there was this problem with these letters coming in. It actually wasn't until way later on that they admitted that they had even gotten letters as well. And when they were finally confronted about the letters, they basically just said that they didn't think the letters were were like brutal enough or threatening enough, disturbing enough, so they just decided to not tell them. Which it seems like they were disclosing something on purpose in order to prevent someone from backing out of buying the house. So 
that is when the Brodus family was very, very angry and they decided to sue them. But anyway, back to the letters. So the Brodus family moved into the house not knowing that there was this problem with letters or anything going on. And after only three days of living in the house on June 5th, they started getting letters as well. And the first letter said, do you need to fill the house with the young blood I requested? Question mark. Once I know their names, I will call to them and draw them to me. I asked the prior owners to bring me young blood. My grandfather watched the house in the 20s. My father watched the house in the 60s. And now it is my time. I have been put in charge of watching and waiting for its second coming. So obviously they got this and we're like, what the fuck? So at this point, they're starting to put the pieces together that someone really had possibly owned this house in the past and was now just creepily watching them. Can you imagine in your house right now, if there was someone in your apartment, wherever you live, that was just waiting around outside, constantly watching you and letting you know that they're watching you, but you never could figure out where they were or who they are. Like it would be scary for anyone, whether it was a prank or not. So they hadn't actually moved into the house yet. And this letter creeped them out so bad bad obviously that they decided not to move in. They were hoping to kind of figure out what was going on with the letters, clear it up, see if it was a prank, and then go ahead and move into their house. And I mean, it was smart. They didn't want to put themselves or their kids in danger. And the idea of someone watching them in their house is just beyond creepy. Then on June 18th, they received two more letters. The first said, have they found out what is in the walls yet? In time they will. I am pleased to know your names and the name of the young blood you have brought me. Will the young bloods play in the basement? Who has the bedrooms facing the street? I'll know as soon as you move in. It will help me to know who is in which bedroom so I can plan better. Um, creepy. And in the other letter, it talked about how somehow, which they don't know if this is true, but the person who wrote it said that somehow the windows and doors in the house watched them and kept tabs on them. So obviously this freaked out the Brodus family even more. At this point, they decided they straight up just did not want to live in this house. They didn't want to own this house. They wanted to sell it, but they knew that was going to be hard and they ended up in such a shitty situation. On February 1st, 2015, the house was placed on the market for 1.49 million. And over the next few months, the price dropped at least twice, first to 1.35 million and then down to 1.25 million. And needless to say, they weren't having any luck selling their house. Now, what's weird about it is they were up charging it by a lot. Like they didn't even move into this house and they were trying to get like a ton of equity out of it. it they were trying to sell it for way more than they bought it for, which was just odd. But um, yeah, they eventually just gave up, pulled it off the market and they felt like they were just not gonna have any success. So instead they decided to rent the house out to people. They were able to actually get a family to rent the house and stay there without the letters bothering them. But about three weeks after the first family moved into the house, another letter came. The contents of this letter was actually never published because it was supposed to be really threatening, really disturbing, and really graphic, so they didn't release it. But apparently they contained very direct threats. So in June 2015, a report came out that they had tested the envelopes and were picking up new DNA. And this is when they were able to determine that the person who was writing all of the letters was a female. There's had been confirmed to be postmarked from Kearney, which is a city that's about 20 miles away from Westfield. And this is kind of helpful, but not specific enough to really do anything with it. And just because someone sent it from Kearney doesn't mean it was written there. And an FBI profiler examined the letters and just was able to determine that they were written by someone who's really old probably, which is very big and not too helpful. So then in 2016, the Brodus family actually tried to get permission from the city to just bulldoze the house and put two new houses on its land. But their request was denied. And what's really creepy is the last letter they received actually said that they should not move forward with their plans to tear down the house. So somehow this person knew what they were thinking, doing, planning, it's just bizarre. So let's look at the possible theories people have. There are some people that think the letters were actually just written by the Broadus family, that they wanted to get out of the house, so they wrote the letters as a plot to like somehow get out of it, but that doesn't really make sense considering it didn't work out for them, and that seems like quite a lot of money to just, you know, just make a decision and be like, oh, never mind, I'm just gonna make up this huge lie. I mean, I think they were pretty excited about living in this house, and they were very disappointed that these letters were coming in, because it's very 
creepy. A lot of people have brought up the idea though that maybe they were just doing all of this to sue the old owners, but that doesn't make sense either because they would have had to start writing these letters before they even moved in. And then there's the idea that obviously one of the old original owners of the house when it was first built could be involved or kin of them could be involved. And this is really weird, but many years ago, the house was actually recorded being sold for a dollar. And then that person sold the house for a dollar. Now this seems kind of weird to do, but apparently this is a thing that people do that you can actually sell your property if you can't pay for it. You can sell it to someone else to basically hold it for you as an asset and then sell it back to you for a dollar. So basically just moving your money around. So it's possible that the house was kind of just, you know, traded around between family members and friends for a while. It's even possible that the original owners somehow feel like they got ripped off in the whole situation or there was some turmoil and they lost the house and so they've been watching it ever since. There's also the idea that maybe someone else, just a random third party, also wanted the house and the Broaddus family was already under contract with it, so maybe they had an idea to kind of scare them out of the house, but I mean, that doesn't make much sense either because the family before was getting the letters too. But yeah, I mean, I guess it's possible they would have had to start really early. Maybe their plan was whoever got stuck with it would end up listing it for really, really low just because they were desperate to get out of it and then they could swoop in and buy it, but I don't know, it seems like a stretch. And then there's the idea that maybe the whole thing is just a hoax. There's a lot of speculation that the letters are just written by some jerk trying to fuck with the family. And although the letters were very scary and threatening and creepy how they were talking about young blood and like getting the kids, I mean, very, very freaky, but they never were anything more than letters. And because of this, it has been moved to the bottom of investigators, you know, list of things to worry about. There's so many other actual crimes and stuff happening, and this is just threats, and it could just be a prank for all we know. Police say that they have no idea who sent the letters. It has just remained a mystery since then. And I'm not sure at this point if the Brodus family has received any other letters. I couldn't find anything else reported from them recently, but it is very interesting that they mentioned that there are possible bodies in the walls of the house, or I guess they were alluding to what could be there. So it's kind of interesting that no one has like tried looking in the walls. I guess you'd have to like take it all down and like who knows if it's even real, but it's kind of crazy to think that it could be telling the truth. So I wanna know what you guys think. Do you think that this is just some prank? Is the family involved? Is a competing real estate buyer involved? Or is this really going back to a family that owned this house like way a long time ago that had some type of vendetta or curse on the house or something like that? I wanna know your guys' thoughts for sure. Definitely let me know below. Be sure to make sure you're subscribed and you have your notifications on because there will be videos every day until Halloween for you freaks. But that's it for me today, guys. I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you next time.